Welcome back to Tools and Track. It's time for us to once again talk about the great big elephant in the room. If the elephant was a inch by inch by inch corner box section, this going to stop me having a clutch. So we gently alluded to this problem uh, an episode ago maybe, that um, the engine sits here by the way and there's a clutch slave cylinder that pushes out and more or less pushes into where the bulkhead bottom is. I've kind of casually ignored this for a number of months because I kind of knew this would be a problem. I also knew that if I maybe just trimmed off the adjuster on it, I might actually get away without the actual arm hitting it. But what we've now established is uh, the arm's going to hit it and then an inch beyond. I either go for some crazy clutch nonsense, for example, internal bell housing hydraulic push affairs at some Ford run, but to be honest, I've got a really bad habit of going overkill to solve what's probably a very simple problem. And in this case, I'm not going to. There is a way to very simply solve this problem. It means I'm going to have to chop out some chassis. So allow me to f***eth around no further. Let's get right into the roots of what the problem is here. Now I've got this foot plate on for the pedals because it's going to be an integral part of my problem. As you can see, this back plate on it needs to be fully flush against the lower bulkhead. As a result, I can't really change too much without that not having a locating point. Now that's not too bad because most of the actual bolts for that either go along this top section here or what will be the floor on the bottom. So I could do with losing a wee bit, it's not gonna be the worst thing. But let's look at here, which is a bare section, but has the exact same problem. Now, obviously what we're discussing here we need to mirror. If you look here, we have two spars that go along the bottom and they tie in to this section of box at the bottom here. Now, you'll see here that it doesn't line up with this bar. Now that's because this part here is pretty much exactly where the clutch slave cylinder lives. So I can't add anything here to remove from that. So that isn't going to solve our problem. Similarly, there's only so much I can remove before actual structural members start to be affected. So compounding with that, it all projects off at an angle too. So f my life. What I'm gonna do though is clearly chop chassis out. What we'll need to do is make sure that whatever we chop out, we replace with strength and then some. That brings me back to the board because whilst we made all this list, which was not in any way, shape or form coherent, what we can look at here is, well, clutch, mod chassis. That's today's task, but clearly defined within that is going to be triangles. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, we can probably resolve this in about five minutes and it's not going to be worthy of an episode. But what we're going to do to resolve that includes many other steps that we've omitted so far. And that is triangulating and adding strength to this chassis. Now, we keep tickling on it at little points throughout the build and I maybe do a wee bit here and there and then we skip it. The reason I've been doing that is because I don't want to just fully triangulate the whole chassis if we're using the special helicopter grade aluminium that will do the job for us. But we're now at a point where we're going to start sheeting and I know what I can and cannot sheet. So what we're going to do here is deal with this pedal problem and then look to triangulate all of the bits that we're not sheeting. So there's probably going to be a lot of montages in here, but not yet. Because the first thing I need to do is get the angle grinder out and see how bad this is going to be. So that's your menu for today. Enjoy your f***ing meal. Well, that felt drastic. Right, let's see if we can make these three pipes become one and still remain strong. Sorry, we distraction here. The postman just came and delivered this. So as I said, I'm sure there was a fitting that would fit this fuel rail. So while we're here, let's see if it does. Right, fuel rail. I have pre-listened these by the way, so don't, don't panic. Don't make me look like a dick in front of all the big boys. Pop. Goes the pulsation damper. By the way, <clears throat> pulsation damper is exactly what this thing is. I knew there was a word for it, I just couldn't remember it previously. Ah, oh, yes. Look at that voice. And put an output. Right, that's that dealt with. Well, we'll see if it's dealt with many, many minutes from now when I actually get it back on the car. But obviously, we'll need to find somewhere regulating the pressure for the fuel as well. But you know, that's easy solved. 
Anyway, on to the next thing. Right, and with some slight projection, what we have here is the bottom plate, that's the bit that the pedal's all located against. This bit that runs parallel to the transmission, and this bit that runs top down from the top down. So this is the gap, and this is what we need to bridge. Now, here's where it's gonna be a bit creative, because I don't wanna to have to intrude too far into where the pedals go on this. So I think whatever we're gonna make is going to weld all the way around this, but it's going to sit on top of this and sit on top of that edge there. Possibly even curling in and then coming along. The reason being, I don't want to put it onto the side of that and that because it's going to intrude into where the pedals live. So we're having to think kind of very three dimensionally here. So I think what we're going to do is cut out something that will run here, up along there, bridge down between here, and it's going to cut up along there and then bridge down there. Now, by all accounts, I'm not going to cut this guy here out because I want to face onto that and get as much strength back and welded onto that as I can get. So we'll probably weld all the way around here, but have the plate come up and meet around here and come up and meet around there. <clears throat> It'll all become clear once I chop it out. It'll probably come clear to me as much as it will to you, but that's the game plan. Anyway, now I know what I need to cut out. Let's go and find some bloody thick steel. So we're at a stage now with this that um, I've got many, many, many welds to complete once again. Uh, we've had this before where I'm, I'm tacking things and then walking away and then I'm like, ah, I really should finish that weld and I never get around to it. Now, one situation that I'll uh, show you that I really should have done that sooner is at the back of the car. It's got a bit of a jaunty angle on it, hasn't oh it? Oh my. Yeah, I only just clocked that earlier on. So another case in point, I've just sort of spot welded that yeah, one. Yeah, because if you look over here, you can see when it's not broken, yeah. but it's just spotted in place, there's no strength. <clears throat> so I, I thought we'd get away with it because there's not a lot of weight on it. It turns no. out there's, no. there's, there's still enough weight on it. So, Aye, bend it, yeah. break it. First. So we're stripping her down again for another weldathon. Um, whilst we're on it, don't forget we do have a list to address. So what I'm going to do is get all upside down welding done, and whilst it's upside down, we're going to floor it. No, sure. floor it with the engine in and see if it can it. <laughs> Sadly not, no, I'm going to start looking at the panel, the underside, so we flip it back around. The next stage is going to be taking this thing a drive. I'd like to have a place to rest my feet when we do it. So, another thing also I need to deal with is paint. Uh, as you can see, there's, there's bits here that are starting to kind of flash off with us. I am here where the coolant has been spilling on Yeah, there. it's not great. And um, I mean, if I can at least get it in primer, I'll be happy. <laughs> the last thing I want to do before the diff comes out though, is we've got two spars that need to run up here to finish the triangulation in the back end. I need to do the measurement for that before that comes out to make sure that it will come out again. But we'll get to it. So in the meantime, uh, let's take everything else off and start filing it out of the way. Well, you're here. See this how you're about. Oh, I do. More for my reference than for anything else, we've got two bars that we still need to attach from the bottom of this floor pan here up to the top. And I've not done this yet because I want to make sure 
pure and final where this, that's going to go. And as luck would have it, it's going to go exactly where this is going to be. So if I was to put a bar from here up to here, the snout for this diff pinion wouldn't come out. So I think we're going to have to put the bar slightly offset, probably taking off from here up to here, just to give this room to come in and out. On this side, ironically enough, well, not ironically enough, because obviously the diff drives offset, uh, that'll go up there fine. So um, yeah. One for myself to note for later than anything else, because we'll just get this welded up the different way. So here's a situation I, wouldn't have thought I'd have to deal with quite so soon, which is uh, draining the fuel tank. Now, the simple way for me to do this is I'm going to just take it off from the fuel pump and stick it in here. Now, when I fill this tank up, I've put two full jerry cans of fuel in it, because I don't want to have a situation where five litres is maybe not enough. So, let's see the fuel efficiency of a low cost when you run it for I would say six minutes, one idle, without load. Red and up, Sasha. Clatter, 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 clatter. <laughs> Dead <Deji. laughs> Right, let's get it off the Clockwise, well, we should buy an asset advance, because how we have to defend that. Right. Clockwise, and clockwise for you. Exactly, yeah. Right, let's put it in the side first. One, okay. two, three. While we're dosing around with the uh, angle grinder and the welder, probably worth having a look at these. Now, bear in mind, many, many, many moons ago, I put these in just to, you know, hold an engine. They weren't really finessed in any shape or form. So we, we really need to kind of finish this off. I know the engine will sit on here and locate fine and it will bear weight. What I need to do is remove, well, the excess basically and try and make it look like it's supposed to be there as opposed to just being something that's been chopped out of some plate steel and slabbed in without a second thought. It's probably not going to be easy to explain what I'm doing with these engine mounts because the car's upside down. So I'm going to pass over to my Australian cousin. Good day, mate. This is terrible. I'm not going to do an Australian accent because it's crap. Anyway, this is us looking down on the engine mount here. What I'm going to do to try and reduce as much stuff protruding from the lower end of the chassis is tied up the bottom half of this here, which is the top half because it's upside down. Anyway, we're going to trim all this down, make it look neat. I'm probably going to leave as much of the top end intact simply to make sure that the strength of this plate is retained. Anything below here though, nothing's really holding it onto the chassis. All of the actual grip is in the top part of this. So let's uh, let's neaten up as best we can. And add in some gussets as well. Go on, where I mate? That's fing off. <laughs> That's been a substantial amount of welding. So, what we've managed to do. A whole load of welding that I couldn't normally get, such as all of this stuff, has now been addressed. We have dealt with engine mounts. They've been tidied up a bit. I have welded in all the underside for that stuff. And we have put in these spars. Obviously, I'll need to weld these bits and trim off all of that jazz, which I've 
marked up, ready for the trim, so that we can get a plate on them when it's back the way around and we can actually start shooting the back of that. We've also dealt with all the wee bits in the back, including the dicky suspension mount, which I've straightened out and probably welded up. We are almost done and ready to flip the chassis. There's one more thing I want to address while we're underneath, and it's been, again, a bit of three-dimensional thinking. And it's to do with the transmission mount. Now, you see, I thought it was being a right smart arse here, and uh, welding all this up so that it was going to be nice and strong. However, what I've failed to consider is I'm going to have to sheet all this floor, and what we have is a complete blocker to that, because I would need to trim all the floor around this, and it means that there's going to be a big air gap right along here. So it might be smarter if I just put a big cut line along here and then have that blank. So we'll see weld along that bit, but I'll have something here that I can rivet and kind of just flange a floor onto because for all intents and purposes, we're kind of ready for this. Well, we're certainly ready on the driver's side. I'll need to tidy this up before we look at the passenger side, but uh, no, that's wrong. Passenger side, driver's side. It's been a long day and the car's upside down, right? Give us a break. Anyway, so I'll address this and we'll maybe look at kind of sorting that although we'll probably need to put in that seat spar that i've not fully done because i don't have a long enough section of sheet right let's just deal with the exhaust mount and we'll, we'll come to that so much involved who thought building a car would be so bloody complicated <laughs> Last bit for today, this tube stuff, which has been sat around for Christ knows how many months, is going to go in the car. Remember the earlier chat about triangles? It's a Sunday. Hello, oh, that's what I'm going We are continuing here with adding, as you can see, as we discussed, lots and lots of gussets. Yep, gusseting to make triangles because triangles are strong. Très bien. So I think I have got one, two, three, four to go. So I'm going to chuck some measurements out and Mr. Hodor here is going to cut them. Choppity, choppity, chop. much strength adding as I can do without the fancy steel. Now, the fancy steel is technically an alloy, but we'll get into all of that next week. For the moment though, I have a nice, strong and a bit more confidence inspiring chassis than I had before. So I'm gonna call that a win. Also, I'm gonna call it the end of the episode. Everyone running up the side of the screen, you guys are Patreons and you guys are awesome. If you wanna know what that's about, patreon.com slash tools and track. And like, I say that every week, but like you do get behind the scenes stuff, like I do film Patreon special stuff and a whole lot of other things, so it is kind of work, worth doing. If nothing else actually though, just to kind of help this build, because it really does help this build. Anyway, if that isn't for you, cool, I totally get it. Just hit the like and subscribe button at least. It's only made me grow. And in the meantime, I'll bid you farewell. Try safe guys. 
I'll see you next time. Ask me why and I'll spit in your eye. I meant to tell you there was a line in the Smiths I was thinking about you the other day. This reference never made sense to me until now. Right. Um, you asked me something that would have made Caligula blush. Ah! <laughs> and the senator's wives. <laughs> it would make him blush because we watched Caligula, not because we were a pair of f***ing deviants. <laughs>